Well, hi, everyone. Well, it, uh, it's been a while, about uh, three weeks I had to take off because my voice was a mess. It's still a little hoarse, but uh, I lost my voice with an a, uh, infection in my sinuses. And that happens uh, to me quite a bit. Everybody was worried that it was COVID, but it was not. It was a sinus infection, and it really uh, that's still affecting me. So uh, uh, I'm going to talk today about a photographer that... I first came across, oh gosh, 15 years ago, I think, looking through a source book. And source books, if you don't know what source books are, they're these uh, large uh, form books that were used to be printed by um, by the photographers themselves, so to speak. A, a company would come in like the workbook or the black book, and they would allow you to pay for a page or two pages. Uh, in the workbook or the, the black book, and then they were printed and sent out free to ad agencies all over the world. Oh my gosh, it was longer than 15 years ago. It was about 20 some years ago. Um, and I was looking through this and I got to a, a spread of images and I just stopped. I just absolutely stopped because the images were just so breathtakingly different and breathtakingly composed, uh, I don't know the other, any other way to say it, that pure composition. Of course, the lighting was great. Of course, the, the technical, all of that stuff was fine too. But the composition was just over the top for me. I just absolutely fell in love with this photographer. He's also a sculptor and a painter and a uh, collagist, etc. His name is Nadav Kander. He's a British photographer not of candor, and I'm uh, just knocked out. Take a look at this particular shot that we have here. Isn't this amazing? We've got this this human element here, which gives a scale to whatever it is this it is that we are looking at here. Now, <clears throat> I honestly can't tell you if this is a real object or if this was composed. As far as I know, most of not of candor's work is shot in camera. It's his camera work that is so amazing. But um, nonetheless, this is a stunning shot. Notice where the person is. We've got the, the large sculptural item here. But this person fits in between that little horizon line there, the mountains which are farther off, the little horizon line which is closer, and then all of this empty space here. And the person fits right in the middle there. If that person's head was into that that uh, dark line there on the horizon, it's not going to work. If this was, if this shell was uh, too far off, it's not going to work. Everything is just perfect here. Uh, at first, you think this is a tangent here, but it's not. If you look closely, there's a little bit of space there, and it's just it, it's a, an immaculate composition, photographically. It's just incredible. Now, Candor is a uh, <clears throat> Um, I think a, a photographer who uses all kinds of cameras, large format, digital, medium format, doesn't really matter to him. He chooses the correct format for the job. Now, look at this portrait. Uh, and again, so many interesting things going on. Look at the boats in the background here. You see them? We've got boats on the horizon. From about the center of the image up, there's nothing. There's this just giant foggy, smoggy, whatever it is, sky. Then we have one horizon, a second horizon, and notice this little stream of water coming in here that cuts right through our person here, who's standing dead center in the lower third of the uh, image going horizontally, and he just stands out. Emit the color of his costume is similar to the background, but he stands out very well due to focus, placement, and the fact that all these little things are smaller and around him. The addition of the boats just adds so much more to the image. It's just really, really, really incredible. I just, I love this picture. I just do. <clears throat> the next picture uh, is from a series he did on the Ganges River. Uh, people are having a some sort of meal or a picnic or something. Uh, notice the how he 
brings in the, the fog, the smog, or whatever it is, as a compositional element. It reduces whatever this busyness is back here, it just reduces it, and it brings ever more focus to the foreground. In this picture, it's really, really important to understand the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. The middle ground is this sharp, in-focus uh, pillars here, and our, the, the gentleman on the boat, and our foreground is this family sitting here uh, enjoying a meal on the rocks, and then this great leading line thing that takes us all the way out of the picture. Fascinating, fascinating. Composition is absolutely everything when you're working in photography. I believe that composition, timing, color, uh, white space. It, it, these are the these are the tools of a photographer. Another really incredible portrait. Notice the single horizon with our human being um, kind of walking right here on the horizon, right at the horizon line. Really powerful. The horizon is not dead center, it's pretty close, but our guy is pretty much dead center. That's pretty much dead center of the image um, from a vertical standpoint, right in there. And what it is, I don't know. I uh, don't know. Uh, I uh, purposely sometimes do not um, investigate that stuff because I don't want to know. I just want to know the picture. I want to see the picture. I don't necessarily want to go and examine was this a tarmac or what it was. I just think it's absolutely fascinating. And look at the light coming right and catching him right there. Really fascinating shot. I love this. <clears throat> the shadow of the tree. The guy standing in this little slot of light. Uh, and again, uh, if you're going to ask me if it's composited or not, I, I do not know. Uh, I, I do not think so. Um, where it is, I have, again, I have no idea. But um, I just look at the picture. I don't really want to get into, you know, how the picture was made or what kind of camera it was made on because I don't think any of that is important. I think what's important is look at the photograph. Look at the design, the, the, the big black area, the brown area with the, ref with the shadow of a tree. Or maybe it's not a shadow of a tree. I think it is because I can see that line from here to here. Uh, uh, some light being thrown there. We can see that the gentleman, uh, there's lit light from back here and there's light from there. So he's definitely looking into some light here, throwing a shadow back. It's all part of uh, Kander's really incredible way of handling uh, uh, light and composition. In a photograph like this, composition is everything. And it's so well thought out. And it's so perfect. Really, really clean photographs by a master photographer. Look at, the, look at the empty space around. Look at the use of empty space. Let's look at the picture before. Look at the use of empty space. And again. And again. And again. It's not minimalism, I would argue. I don't think it's minimalism. I think it's an absolute perfect control of the palette that the photographer's using. Condor's also known for his portraits. Um, color, composition, heroic nature of the, the pictures. Uh, this, this gentleman is lit. Look at the light right on the plate of the face. Isn't that stunning? Goes around to a very dark area here, and a little bit of warm light picks it up in the back, and you can see it down here as well. We've got some sort of gel thing going on back here. There's really almost no understanding of where the background ends and the surface begins. You see that there? A little bit of a uh, horizon line there, but notice the muted colors. It's, it's an odd feeling picture. It's an odd feeling picture. You get the little chrome part of the uh, of the uh, chair. All there for a reason. 
all there for a reason. There's nothing on this picture that's not there for a reason. Uh, and it's just, I think, exceptional lighting. Absolutely exceptional. Um, <clears throat> I think another photographer who lights this way is Dan Winters, and we'll talk about Dan Winters at some point as well. Uh, he uses projection as well. This is a projection. In other words, the uh, slide or the transparency is projected onto the talent. Look at the beautiful light through here. Notice the color. Notice the little shadow all the way around her there. Um, different ways of including that, including digital manipulation. But again, it's not about what he did Technically, it's about what he achieved to look at. This is a fascinating image. The empty space of her upper chest here is filled with this, these branches all the way into her nose and her eye and up into her hair. Everything is, is designed for this image, uh, including the little soft shadow behind her. It sets her off from the background. We've got another portrait here that I, I absolutely love this shot. Um, got a nice big fill on this side, a fill light. And I do believe it's a light because if you look at the ears, you can see highlights on that. So there's something happening here. Um, <clears throat> I call it ambient fill when I'm working with my students. In other words, you set the, the fill of the shot, the ambient of the shot with a very large light, like a big four by six softbox or a seven foot octa, or maybe you're using the walls, but you set your base exposure there um, so that the shadows can't go any darker than where you set that base exposure. You use a second light as your main light that's a little brighter than your ambient light, uh, and you get this great effect here. But again, what's important is look at the effect of the orange highlighting his face. And again, look at the background. Is it a background? Is it a surface? Is it a... We don't know. Working with this, this uh, warm tone color here and putting it all the blues, even the highlights in the hair here, you'll see are blue. The shadow tones are blue. And these warm tones just pick it right up. And again... The, the subject isn't looking at us. It's not a, it's not a picture of somebody. It is a portrait. Uh, really a fascinating, fascinating way to work. Uh, but this is, this is one of my favorite photographers. This is Nadav Kondur. He's a, a UK photographer, and I think he's one of the, the best out there. There's, there's uh, some links in the description below. You can go and check out more of Nadav Kondur's work. Thanks for coming along. Sorry it's been so long since I updated, but... Uh, as bad as my voice sounds now, it was much worse for the last three Mondays. So have a great one, and I'll see you all next time.